Hello, BookTube. I've got some books for you today. Um, got three that arrived. Um, I'd opened them all up because one came in the post, uh, sort of morningish. The second one came by a courier, and the third one just came within the last hour uh, from Amazon. So we'll go in the order that they came. Here is Gossip in a Library by Edmund Goss, and you might be familiar now with uh, his writings because I've been talking about him for quite some time, and I've uh, purchased a number of his books, uh, his essays mainly, as well as I'm reading through his memoir, Father and Son, in preparatory to reading uh, a biography I have, and then I recently, yesterday, received uh, well, it's his life and letters, but it's mostly letters. So I've actually been dipping into that last night and um, a bit this morning, uh, just uh, looking at the letters. But this year I do have, I ordered a copy of Gossip in the Library last month uh, in, in April. Uh, it was a first printing, but they all seem to, like they're red cloth, but they all seem to be really badly sun damaged on the spines. And the one I got is quite fragile because after a while, there's too much sun, and depends on the cloth, but sometimes it just breaks away. Uh, like, you're taking it off, and all of a sudden, it just sort of breaks all there. And then you got the uh, spine panel just sort of flopping in the wind, in a sense. I've got a nice set of um, some history books, and uh, I asked specifically for the um, um, from the seller, is there any sun damage on it? Because I do know... That, that this can happen, and it came in the back as a negative. No, nope, nothing like that. Well, there was, and yeah, one of the uh, at least one of them, as as I was taking it out of the package, it just sort of the spine, uh, it just almost came off. So I'm gonna have to do some um, um, restoration work on that. Eventually, I, uh, it's it's not impossible to do. You, uh, you you get some cloth, and and it's good paper and everything. You. You sort of glue it in on the inside of the spine. You trim everything up as much as possible. And then you lift the cloth along here. And you, then you just sort of shove it in. It, it, it's a poor man's way of doing it. You just sort of sh glue and shove it in. Then put it back down and get it, try to, as much as possible. And if it's, like if you're using some white cloth or something like that, um, uh, binder's cloth, then it depends on the color. Like so something like this, it was brown. You could just sort of color it in a little bit with with brown over top of the uh, the white um, with even a crayon or something like that, and it wouldn't it wouldn't affect anything. But it'll just it'll keep it together and fine. But this and that's why I decided to get this, and it matches my other volumes. Uh, the only thing is, like there was a, a collected essays, and this one says collected essays, which is a bit odd. Volume two. Because it doesn't say anywhere else. I'm going to have to actually look. So I've never seen that in the others. I know there's about a six or eight volume uh, collection uh, of essays. But I, I've never seen it together. I don't see it uh, listed. I'll let that go by. Um, a couple of them there. Oh, uh, uh, police and by sounds of it a, uh, a fire truck. So something's kicked up. Or kicked off. And there's a book play here. Uh, it's weird because it says Garnons Hereford. Haven't looked it up. Don't think it's a person's name. It must be a location or something. Um, and at one time, somebody paid 50p for that. I paid a little more. Um, I went, uh, well, actually cheaper than other ones, but I I think I went about eight pounds for this one, give or take, uh, with with uh, with postage. So, but I'm happy with it uh, because it matches the others. And there was things I wanted to read in there, which out uh, of the other one, if I start reading it, it'll just fall apart. Um, here's a Holbrook uh, Jackson. He's done the Bibliomania uh, Anatomy of, um, and this is called Dreamers of Dreams with a sub. Uh, title of The Rise and Fall of the Night of Nineteenth Century Idealism. That's what uh, did it for me, and it was really cheap. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'll I'll grab that. I I didn't know what to expect. I thought it might be, uh, yeah, to do with literary history or 
somehow is it going to tie in, you know, collecting books with that? I wasn't sure. But what it is, is profiles of a number of, of 19th century intellectual thinkers. Carlyle, Ruskin, William Morris, Emerson, Thoreau, and Whitman. Uh, along with an, uh, a big introduction. Oh yeah, it's a big introduction. It's it's an essay in itself. Uh, it's like 60 pages long. And uh, yeah, so I'm perfectly happy with that. And it has a dust jacket. You can see it's pretty, pretty fragile. And there's a piece here. I don't want to touch it much, but see, it's that. I had it sit down, and that just from the uh, fan sort of uh, did that. It gave it an extra tear. So I'm not sure what to because that piece is just going to go uh, for sure. I'll probably lose that piece because it's, it's just barely hanging on by a thread. But uh, this is, well, it's Favor and Faber. Um, Holbrook Jensen and it's 1948. And that could be why, because they're still probably under wartime uh, paper uh, quality. Oh, and I didn't mention the dates for Gossip in the Library. Uh, the original was 1891, uh, and this, uh, it says revised edition, or no, no, sorry, new edition. Uh, 1913. And so first, 1891, then there were new impressions in, in 1892 and 93, and then not again until 18... Uh, or 1913. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, there's some interesting essays in here. Um, one that, I, that caught my eye uh, is the name, where is it here? Uh, now I can't find it. Oh, cats. Yeah, that was it was cats, like you know, and it's called Gossip in the Library. So, cats. Okay, um, I'm just trying to figure out how that works in there. Uh, the shaving of a shag pat. Okay. Okay. And the life of John Bunko. Well, there we're getting into a few books. Uh, it's a novel. So yeah, so that should be quite interesting. And I've got lots now of Edmund Goss to read, a lot of essays. So what I'm doing, I'm actually bouncing around to many of the books. So it's going to be a long time before I ever get them all finished if I do it that way. Uh, but uh, but there, that's the great thing about essays, you can do that. Now what came in from Amazon in the evening uh, delivery is this by D.J. Taylor, another D.J. Taylor uh, book. Uh, it's called Lost Girls, Love, War, and Literature, 1939 to 1951. This came out last year. And I never really looked at it too much. But when I was searching for some other things, I went and looked under his um, his name. And I, I saw this and read a little bit about it. Uh, from the flap here, it says, Lost Girls was the name given by the writer Peter, Peter Cornell to the young women at large in Blitz-era literary London. Lost Girls concentrates on just four. Uh, Lise Lubach, Sonia Bronwell, Barbara Schelt Skelton, and Janetta Woolley. Chic, glamorous, and bohemian, they cut a swath through English cultural life in the 1940s. One of them married George Orwell. That was Sonia Bronwell. Sort of a deathbed uh, romance, I suppose. And Well, he met her before, but uh, he got married uh, uh, in, in his deathbed. Uh, just three weeks before he died, I believe it was. But anyway, um, another became mistress of the king of Egypt. Not sure which one that was. All of them were associated with the decade's most celebrated literary magazine, Horizon, and its charismatic editor, uh, Cyril Connolly. And Cyril Connolly, like I, th I think I've got a collection of Cyril Connolly's uh, reviews. And he's, he's a good, uh, I, I, I enjoy the style of writing. And he sort of can be acerbic in many, many ways um, in just, in, with authors. But um, he obviously liked um, young uh, literary women. <laughs> and more than just uh, these four. Uh, but uh, that's where Orwell met Sonia was uh, through Connolly and, um, and Horizon. Because he was, he was publishing 
articles in Horizon at the time, or just before um, 1984. So, uh, but yeah, so this 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 was another one of those where you know Amazon drops their prices. Um, yeah, it's a 25 cover price, and it went. I think it was uh, seven pounds something. So I thought, well, yeah, I'll I'll grab it. I'll grab it because even if it shows up as a remainder, the cheapest it'll show up will be five ninety nine. Plus, I'm gonna have shipping with that, but more likely it's gonna be eight. Uh, sorry, seven ninety nine or possibly nine ninety nine. So when it goes to under eight pounds, it's definitely worth the uh, uh, worth the, um, the the amount. And I like the cover. I really like the cover. It's uh, I, I'm not one for colorized photos, but that actually works, uh, especially in the background uh, that's still black and white, and some of the desk I think. But yeah, the the background is sort of still blurred black and white. So I thought that was really nice. Uh, this, it's well, uh, there's a lot of photographs in here, uh, and inserts, but yeah, so, um, as if I need another reason to buy a book, but because this is talking about Sonia Bronwell, um, and sort of the circle around that, which is part and parcel to George Orwell or Eric Arthur Blair, um, uh, that it's, it, I can justify it. And that's where it will go. Will go with my um, um, Orwell books. There's two more that I noticed. Well, there's several. There, there's some academic ones, um, some studies, but they are like 70, 80 pounds. Uh, I'm I'm not touching those until if they ever drop in price. Uh, but there's two more. There's a Churchill and Orwell, uh, which I do want to get, and uh, there's another one. Um, I think it's just called His Life and Letters, another sort of biography. Um, and uh, like every year or so, there's a bunch that come out about Orwell. But for the last four years or so, I've I've uh, sort of been remiss. Uh, about five years, really. About, I've been remiss for about five years for getting stuff uh, on Orwell. And it's I, I thoroughly enjoy his nonfiction Um I've read all his fiction, and there's some that I don't mind, I enjoy, like uh, Keep the Apodistra Flying and Coming Up for Air. Uh, Coming Up for Air, I think, has the best first line, bar none, of ever in a, in a novel. It's basically, it all started the day I got my new false teeth. I just, I just, I thought that was wonderful, and I still think it's wonderful. Uh, and then to Keep the Apodistra Flying is good. Um, uh, and then everybody talks about 1984 and Animal Farm, but I don't think they're very well done. I don't think that, I don't think his writing is very, is very good. Uh, he, he doesn't write fiction very well. They're not really well thought out. Uh, but his nonfiction, his reviews, his book reviews, his letters, his essays, now that's what really, really got me, or something like Down and Out uh, in Paris and London, or uh, The Road to Wigan Pier, or Homage to Catalonia. Those are the things that are are good. Ha maybe less so Homage to Catalonia. I think there's uh, there, there's problems with that. And, well, there's always problems from a journalistic point of view for Road to Wigan Pier, but that's a different matter. But it's just really, really well done. Uh, other other fiction, um, I, I actually didn't mind his first novel, uh, Burmese Days. Um, that wasn't too bad. Uh, Clergyman's Daughter, could take it or leave it. It's sort of, uh, to me, not that memorable. I don't remember too much about it. It was interesting to a certain extent. Um, try to think of what else there was. That, that might be covering most, of, if not all, of his fiction. And if there's anything else that I've missed, it's because it hasn't made an impression on me. Um, I've, I've read Keep the Apodistra Flying twice, um, and I've read twice or three times, uh, 1984 and Animal Farm, just to make sure that I know that I say that I don't think it's very well done, basically, so, but I'm still interested in him as a writer, and even the construction of 1984, uh, with regards to, like, I got the D.J. Taylor's book, which is a biography of 1984, uh, and that other one, um, I don't see it here, it's in my piles here somewhere, piles of books, that is, uh, 
keep a clear, keep a clean mind, BookTube. Um, and yeah, it's 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 sort of a biography of of um, nineteen eighty four as well. Oh, there's a, there's a novel too called Last Man in Europe, I think it is, um, which sounds interesting, which I'd like to get. It's about it's a novel about Orwell writing this because that's what the the novel was going to be called. Nineteen eighty four was going to be called Last Man in Europe, I think, or Last Man something like that, Last Man Standing in Europe, or something like that. Um, um, some, something to that effect. So somebody's written a novel. So that looks like it's interesting. And I still, I still got to get Hitchens why Orwell Orwell matters. And I just that's something that's been remiss for a long time. And I do have to add that to to my collection. Um, but yeah, the the other Orwell stuff looks interesting. The critical material, but at 80, 80, 75, 80 pounds for like a 200 page book it's going to be a long time before I get a hold of that um, sadly uh, and I don't know how much it will add to to uh, my understanding of Orwell because if, if it's really academic uh, super academic they're going to be doing some weird stuff <laughs> uh, but could be interesting because I am as I say I'm interested in Orwell I, I've still got to read through everything of Orwell. I've, I've got, um, you know, this 20... Well, I don't have the 20 volumes. There was a 20-volume complete Orwell that was put out, edited by Peter Davison. Um, it sort of had a really rocky start, and it didn't look like it was going to be uh, finished, but it finally was. Um, there's a 21st volume, sort of lost uh, Orwell, some stuff, letters, and a few things that came to light after. Uh, but the first nine volumes are the published books so um, well you've got the novels you've got Road to Wigan Pier uh, uh, you've got uh, How Much to Catalonia and you've got uh, um, Down Out in Paris so yeah so you've got Animal Farm you've got 1984 uh, you've got Coming Up for Air you've got um, Clergyman's Daughter you got Burmese Days so, so there's nine. So I'm missing one there somewhere, and I can't remember what that is. I'm not sure if it's... I was going to say Inside the Whale, but I don't think so. But it might be. It could be Inside the Whale. And that's, that's a fabulous three essays uh, that he's done. And the title just fits perfectly. It's an essay about sort of boys, uh, the boys' papers, um... Um, and writing there, uh, it's it's about um, Tropic of Cancer and Crap Capricorn uh, by what's his name? I can't remember his name, but off the top of my head. And then um, there's an essay about Dickens, but they're all tied in. It's 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 wonderful. But yeah, so getting back, sorry, uh, tra tangents and wandering off. There's eleven volumes of his non-fiction, which is all his diaries, his letters. Uh, essays, it's all in chronolo chronological order, all the way through, which makes it a little difficult, that's why, like, I do want to get the great big, um, Orwell, um, essays that's, uh, on the, uh, Everyman, the new Everyman one, that'd be nice to have, so they got, I have all the essays, or most of the essays in one, one, uh, chunk, uh, that would be nice to have. And then there's, there, if anybody's interested, a, a good gateway to get started into this, there's four Penguin uh, compilations uh, that Peter Davison did with good introductions. Um, there's, there's sort of the road, there, there's one with Road to Wigan Pier. Um, oh, I should have, I, I didn't even think I was going to go the, uh, here in in this uh, video, so I do apologize. But look up Penguin, uh, Peter Davison, D-A-V-I-S-O-N, um, and Orwell, and you should be able to find them. There's four compilations that are pretty big, about four or five hundred pages each, and those are really, really good uh, general gateways into Orwell, especially his nonfiction, if, if you're so interested. Um, I don't have them anymore. I gave them away. I gave away all the fiction that I had um, in Penguin, um, but uh, because uh, when I was downsizing as well, and somebody was moving while he was going into the army, and he wanted some stuff, and he like he said he liked Orwell, so I said, "Here you go." <laughs> um, and uh, from what I understand, he 
he took a he was, he was gone for I think four years. I haven't spoken to him in a long time, but he's he was he was in the army for four years, and he says he read them all. <laughs> it may have taken him four years, but I think he enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, um, I'll end it there. It's over twenty minutes. I only had three books to talk about, uh, but it's 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 the Orwell because uh, um, I. I'm, I'm, I'm collecting these other ones. I have no intention of diving back into Orwell at the moment, but when I do see a book about Orwell that is cheap and it looks good, I will get it and add to my collection of Orwell stuff. So when I do get back into it, I will have it. Rather than looking for it then and finding it, oh, crikey, it's now 50 pounds for this book because it's out of print, um, like, like can happen. Uh, so when I do see stuff like that, I will grab it and hence, and, and I don't really need an excuse to buy DJ Taylor. I, I do, I do enjoy his writing, uh, a lot. Um, he's, he's a very good writer. Uh, he's a very good, uh, mystery writer too, a crime writer. Uh, I've only read a few of them. I've got several of them, uh, but, uh, I don't have them all. But, uh, again, I'm not opposed to, to, to picking them up when I see them. Take care, BookTube, and I will should it'll probably be tomorrow that I'll see you. Um, I've or I'm I'm about to record the uh, day eight. I think it's day eight of magazine. Uh, May is for magazines, so I'll be doing that, and that's where you'll see me first thing in the morning. Take care, BookTube. Bye.